Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're on board the cruiser USS Salem. Their volunteers invited us on board to see the ship, and uh, right now we're in a space that Battleship New Jersey has nothing similar to. This is the former aviation hangar. So as designed, Salem could carry a number of float planes, and she had catapults and an aviation crane, and unlike American battleships, which never had a hangar of their own, American cruisers tended to. On the interwar designs and on the uh, large cruisers of the Alaska class, these hangars were amidships. Now, this was a problem because it meant your aviation fuel, all your flammable boats, your flammable aircraft is all amidships where a lot of your important stuff is. So uh, the American tin-clad cruisers didn't do so well in gunfights, especially say around Guadalcanal, because they burned badly. The US Navy knew this was an issue, so even uh, during the pre-war years, started to move the hangars to the extreme back end of the ship so that any damage back here isn't going to affect most of the rest of the vessel. The problem is the back part of the ship has to be deep enough to accommodate this huge space. And not all cruisers were like that. It wasn't until the Brooklyn-class light cruisers that that happened, and then continues with subsequent designs all the way up to the Des Moines class like USS Salem. So we got a couple of neat features here. First of all, I am standing on the elevator. So this will go all the way up to the overhead uh, so you can lift and then lower your aircraft or whatever else you need to move inside the ship via this elevator. There is a hatch overhead, which is on rails that will slide forward to open the space up to the weather. Uh, so then that makes an excellent entry point for any of your stuff that you need to uh, put down here on the elevator. By the time Des Moines entered service, and Salem and Newport News for that matter, uh, naval aviation in the form of float planes had already fallen out of favor. So they instead had their catapults removed and had helicopters installed. And helicopters without those wide wings didn't really take up as much space in here, uh, so they would also store some of the ship's boats, like the captain's gig, and even the captain's personal car down here, so that when the ship is transferring home ports, you take the car along with you, it's protected in the weather, it's not sitting out on the fantail like New Jersey's was when she sailed to the Philippines. Um, so that it, it's nice and protected and the wax coating doesn't get damaged. And then you bring it up on deck and uh, offload it using the crane to the pier and now the captain's got a vehicle while he's in port. The elevator and the hangar door do still work on Salem. And we're, gonna, we're not gonna mess with them today, but it means that the museum has this huge workspace and a great way to move uh, heavy objects into the ship which, having carried enough stuff around New Jersey, I really wish we had these. Now, I'm not sure why Iowa-class battleships didn't have a larger area in the stern for aviation facilities. It would have been a much more modern feature. Uh, so it, it's kind of upsetting that they didn't, and it's one of a number of features that cruisers like Salem had that make them more versatile warships than battleships. So let's uh, look at a couple of the cool features here in the hangar while we've got access to the space. And I should mention, this space is not on a normal tour route. Uh, the, the volunteers here on Salem were kind enough to give us special behind the scenes access. So, uh, first off, we've got this locker over here. It says Salem gig. A gig's a type of boat, so clearly parts or tools for that are there. Probably the coolest feature in here, because it's something that the Iowa-class battleships do not have, is this thing right here. Believe it or not, you can steer the ship using this. This has a mechanical linkage that takes it to the rudder. American cruisers tend to only have a single rudder, including the Alaska-class large cruisers and the Des Moines-class. These ships have more places you can steer from than the Iowa-class battleships. So if you thought our four redundant steering positions were a lot, uh, Des Moines has six, uh, and Salem has six spaces 
that you can steer from, including here Go in the, the hangar. So we're actually aft of the armored box that contains uh, aft your steering with the trick wheel. But in an emergency, you can take your handles off of the bulkhead here, you plug one on each side, and you get two of your strongest aviation bosun mates to take these and crank around to move your rudders in an emergency. Uh, and in a real emergency, you can even open up the hatch so that whatever officer is left in charge after your other steering positions have been knocked out can be up on deck seeing what's happening and just yell down orders to you. Around the hangar, uh, and there's two stories in here, there are cages like this that make excellent workshops. Uh, so they're all more or less similar to this one. And uh, this one has this really cool board. I've seen boards like this with nails on them for you to hang your tools on. I've even seen boards like this before that have the silhouettes of the tools painted on them so you know where to return them. But this one, uh, some anal first class painted the names of each tool on here so that when the non-rate came to, to grab the tool that he was told to get to work on the helicopter or what have you, it's written right there, and then he knows where to return it afterwards. Uh, so this is one of the most gorgeous tool boards I've ever seen. One day I hope my garage looks like this. Another cool feature in this space, you can see the uh, MF and Q coils for the ship's degaussing equipment, which run around the outside shell plating uh, on the interior of the vessel. So that helps tell us that this is an exterior bulkhead, on that side is an exterior bulkhead, so this is taking up the, the maximum internal volume of the ship back here at the stern. Another neat feature that's kept back here, and this is done way better than on New Jersey. In this cage, we have the uh, prop key or prop wrench for the ship's four propellers. Now you'll remember from our previous video, it linked in the description below, we found New Jersey's just sitting on the deck in a random uptake space on second deck, uh, which means that you had to pull it out of that uptake space from a very small door and then carry it to the main deck so that the shipyard could crane it off to use it on your propellers. Not so here on Salem. Theirs is in this purpose-built rack right here in the hangar. So you just have to take it off the wall, take it out, and you can put it on the elevator to raise it up, or you can use the crane on the fantail to raise it up and uh, drop it down into the bed of the dry dock so that the yard birds can use it. So that's way more efficient than what we're doing. Another interesting object here in Salem's hangar is this Carly float. The hangar makes a great space to do restoration projects like the work that's going to happen on this. And uh, this thing was too heavy to just move around the outside of the ship. So it was really easy to put on the elevator, bring down here and now it is stored in a relatively safe space until they're ready to do this maintenance. This was the main sort of uh, life raft, life boat, quote unquote, because the ship's boats were not emergency use uh, for American warships, especially during World War II. And uh, as you can see, this thing is about one curator or six feet tall, uh, and then probably a curator and a half or two curators long. So, there's a lot of space here, and it's stored flat like this, but when it goes into the water, this wooden grating sinks down into the water a couple of feet and uh, is suspended by this netting here. So that gives you a lot more room on the inside. Then there's also rope wrapped around the outside of these uh, pontoons, which are individually sealed. So if this does take some damage in combat and this one's damaged, well, there's enough flotation left to keep everybody above water. So there's not enough room in here for everybody to sit. Well, that's fine because you got this rope to hang on to on the outside and uh, it's really great. You can keep a lot of guys afloat with this until they're rescued. It works reasonably well in the Pacific where the water is warm. You do not want to spend any amount of time in this during a merman's calm, uh, convoy run, however, because uh, it doesn't keep you dry. Th that's the great trade-off, to save weight so that they can slap these all over the superstructure of ships. Uh, they are open to the elements. So uh, we have 
much, much more modern life rafts. In fact, by the end of Salem's career, there were uh, inflatable rafts that were deployed that, uh, were, that would keep you dry. And uh, New Jersey carried those during Vietnam and into the 80s. Uh, another thing you can do with this grating and this net netting is that you can lash all of your emergency supplies in here. Now, throughout World War II, the emergency provisions that would be carried by each uh, life raft increased as they found out that, hey, yeah, we don't actually, it, it takes a while to rescue people and we don't actually have enough stuff in here. So uh, casks of water could be lashed here. Of course, your oars could be lashed to the side. Uh, there's plenty of room to tie things into. Uh, food canisters and other survival tools. Uh, so this is a, a really great World War II thing that uh, thankfully has been replaced with even better objects in the more modern days. And one final feature in this space, or rather outside of this space that's interesting, is the aviation gasoline. So when the ship was mothballed to help with the dehumidification process, this was done on New Jersey as well, spaces that were only accessible by vertical trunks from the main deck and separated from the rest of the ship by watertight bulkheads had holes cut into them so that the ventilation could pass in and out. So uh, through this trunk we can see the pumps that were used to pump the aviation gasoline up to the aircraft or helicopters on the flight deck. Uh, and you can see the wall of the tank in there. So obviously, uh, gasoline is flammable, and the U.S. Navy found early in the war that their protection measures were not enough. So Des Moines has some really top-notch protection features here. So first of all, the pump that is pumping the aviation fuel uh, uses water from the fire main to create suction uh, to educt that fuel up. Second, the fuel tank is all the way at the back of the ship where if it is damaged and causes a conflagration is as far removed from anything else as possible. Third, that fuel tank is surrounded by a water tank. So that's going to help douse any fire that is created there. And then the trunk that accesses it has ladder rungs that are made out of brass so if you're using hobnail shoes, it's not going to strike steel on steel and create a spark and possibly ignite any fuel fumes in that space. And there is a, a suppressive gas in there. There's a CO2 suppressive gas system in there where if there is a fire, you can purge the entire uh, trunk and that, that CO2 being heavier than air will suffocate the fire. While American battleships never had hangars, most other battleships did. For example, uh, British battleships like King George V and German battleships like the Bismarck class had amidships hangars. Obviously, this created the same sort of uh, flammability issues as on uh, early American cruisers. However, battleships like Yamato had an enclosed aft hangar for a number of aircraft and boats so that they weren't damaged from the blast of the ship's guns. I think the American Navy really missed the ball in not having an enclosed hangar, and uh, I think it made cruisers like Salem even more attractive in the post-war years when the battleships are decommissioned. Ships like this are able to be retained, and with their hangars now able to accommodate helicopters, the ships had a lot more functionality in being able to hunt submarines, ferry uh, people from ship to ship, do search and rescue, and all sorts of stuff like that, and it makes a great workspace back here. So this is one of those features of Salem and other cruisers that I love and feel like the Iowas are missing. Do you think adding a hangar to the stern of an Iowa-class battleship would have been worth it considering you would lose some of the storage spaces back there and potentially even need a deeper draft at the stern or a taller uh, fantail deck? Let us know in the comments section down below if you think it would have been worthwhile. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other uh, private businesses and individuals like you. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us over the years, and uh, there's a link in the description below if you would like to support either us or 
the cruiser Salem, which is an all-volunteer run museum ship that's nearly the size of a battleship. Thanks for watching.